What's up people, this is William Jones making videos about leaving religion. The purpose of the videos is to get you to think. Turn your brains on and think. And use logic and use reason and realize that religion is fake. Alright people, this is my first video of 2024. Uh, a lot's been going on. My One of my daughters moved in with her two kids, so... Trying to have time to shoot a video is really not the same when the studio is the living room. So I'm shooting this one in my room because I was like really inspired to shoot this after seeing the movie The Book of Clarence. Really, really good movie. So I had to make a video on this movie. And uh, I'm going to tell you, uh, first I'm just going to say a few things. Then I'm going to put up my uh, spoiler alert to let you know when I talk about the movie, if you haven't seen it, don't watch that part of the video. I will say that again. When I get to that part of the video, if you have not seen the movie, don't watch it. Unless you're one of those people, you don't mind spoiler alerts and you can watch it. But it's coming, alright? So but off the rip, I went through YouTube, watched quite a few, a few videos on the reviews of The Book of Clarence. And the funny part was, the movie just came out, but there are reviews from four months ago based on the trailer. Now, how can you give a review on a movie you have not seen? All you've seen is the trailer. You see, they're just telling you the title, and you're thinking it got something to do with Jesus. So, how are all of these people saying? that the movie is blasphemous but haven't seen anything but the trailer that's kind of uh, like lying you can't review a movie you haven't seen so and, and it's the same people who review the trailer who haven't even read the gospels to even judge the movie so it's very hypocritical in my opinion to sit here and and judge a book by its cover. You have not seen it, don't put out a bad word on it. Then they'll say, well, Jay-Z has something to do it, do it with it so you know it. it's satanic, it's demonic, it's blasphemous, or they're going to go to hell for doing this movie. And, you know, the thing about this, about this thing is, when you're watching the movie through the lens of a Christian, and you're trying to, you know, uh, what is it, you know, you, you're trying to cross every T, dot every I, then you're going to have a problem with the movie because you're missing what's really being said in the movie. You're missing it because you, you can't get past the dogma of Christianity to really enjoy the movie. The movie was really good. So, from all the reviews I've seen, and only a handful have actually seen the movie. Oh, I'm, I'm talking about like, I've seen two, three videos of people doing a video re reviewing the movie after actually watching the movie. But the rest, they did a review four months ago, and all in the comments, people, oh, the God going to judge them. You know, all that nonsense. Now, and I'll also say, watching this movie as a non-believer is really, really good. Watching this movie as a non-believer and knowing the Gospels is really, really good. Watching this movie as a non-believer, knowing the Gospels, and how the New Testament was constructed is really, really good. You know, you, you get to see a whole lot more than those who just know a couple passages in the Bible and think they could judge a whole movie because they've cause they seen a two-minute trailer. That's false advertisement. So I want I want to go into the movie... For those of you, uh, like my friend told me, you got to have an open mind to watch this movie. I'm like, nah, you a believer. You got to have an open mind. I can watch the movie. My mind been open. I'm just going to watch the movie and enjoy and see what he's talking about. I enjoyed the movie. It made good sense. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go into the movie. I'm going to talk about the movie. But if you have not seen the movie... This is the spoiler alert. I shall say it again. If you have not seen the movie, 
This is the spoiler alert. All right, now the gist of the movie is about a man named Clarence, of course. And the movie is broken down into three different books. And, and, and basically, he's not happy with his life the way it is because he don't have any money. Uh, he wants to do better in life. He owes somebody money, want to kill him. He wants to do better for his mom. He just wants to be known. But, you know, he, he's going around, he's hearing about this guy, Jesus, doing miracles. And basically, Clarence is a non-believer. If you want to call him an atheist, call him an atheist. But he's a, he is totally a non-believer. But everything he says makes sense. Because he's, he's telling the people, y'all are believing something without any evidence. He said, that's silly. Are y'all believing in somebody in the sky you've never seen? You have no evidence for what you believe in. And that, that's true. He went around, he, he wanted to be like a messiah himself. Okay? And also in the, brother, in, the, in the movie, he has a brother. His brother's name is Thomas. For those of you that might know, one of the 12 disciples in the movie was Thomas, also called Didymus. Thomas means twin. Now, according to some Christian narratives, Thomas was called twin because him and Jesus resembled each other. Okay, so they kind of play off of this in the movie. And, and, and the, the main character, Clarence, has a brother named Thomas, and they're twins, okay? One of the twins, he's, he's an apostle of Jesus of Nazareth, all right? His brother is Thomas, the apostle of the Jesus, of Jesus of Nazareth. Now, if you know anything about the original timeline, the disciples did not become apostles, really, until Jesus had resurrected and ascended into heaven, and the Holy Spirit came on them and did cloven tongues of fire. That's when they became apostles, but it's a movie. Everything doesn't have to line up, okay? But they, he wanted to be the 13th apostle. And they laughed at him and everything. He even got baptized by John. John, I don't even want to baptize. You don't even believe there's a God. So why am I baptizing you? It doesn't make sense. The apostles, you don't, you don't even believe in God. So they want him to prove himself, which he went out to do. And a lot of things happen with the character. He's out here going to prove himself and he ends up changing himself. He changes. I mean, you know, the what his thought process, everything changes. But, you know, he even met Mary, the mother of Jesus. And he's sitting down with her like, hold on, so you're saying, and Joseph was there. Joseph, the stepfather of Jesus, was there. And he's, but he's questioning her like anybody with some sense would. Like, hold on, so you, you just got pregnant, not by no man. Like, no, so this man didn't impregnate you. No, he didn't. And she's like, the angel Gabriel came to me and told me I would be with child, and that's what it was. And so he's like, so that's how he did This is the story you sticking to. And she's looking like, what? And then and he was like to, like to Joseph, like, you believe this? Like, it doesn't make, this doesn't make sense. He's like, oh, okay, all right, well, I'm leaving, like, because clearly y'all not going to give me the information I need because you're going to stick to this whole stupid story about being impregnated by a god so it didn't make sense so he decided himself i'm gonna be the messiah at which he goes around oh let me let me back up one part of that for those of you that might not know uh mary told a story about jesus when he was a young boy making birds out of clay you might have said wood in the movie but i know it was one story is clay he made these clay birds, and then he brought them to life, and the birds flew off. Now, if you know anything, you know, there were many different Gospels when they were choosing the Gospels. That particular story comes from the infancy Gospels. So you're not going to find it in the canonized Gospels. The canonized Gospels are the ones found in the Holy Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. This story is not in there. It's in one of the other Gospels that didn't make the cut. So if you see, when you see that story... Or if you have seen the movie, you've seen that story, that's what it was referencing, a whole nother gospel. They also make sure to have Thomas taking notes in the movie. His brother later kind of references him and says, oh, yeah, go ahead and get, get in to put these notes in your little book so, you, so you'll have it for later. For those of you that don't know, another gospel that did not make the canonized cut was the gospel of Thomas. He had a whole, a, it was a whole entire gospel dedicated to him, the Gospel of Thomas was through his eyes. 
They had the Gospel of Mary Magdalene back in the day, you know, the Gospel of Judas Iscariot, uh, the Gospel of Peter. They had a whole lot of Gospels out, but they only chose four for the canonized Bible. So you got to understand this, that they're, what they're making references to by him telling his brother, yeah, go ahead and take your little notes and put them in your, in your book. He was referencing the Gospel of Thomas. All right, so he goes out to be a Messiah. And before that, he also met, uh, he had to um, go out and fight to prove himself, try to free some slaves. The man told him, if you can beat my slave Barabbas, I'll set him free. Now, if you don't know the story, in the gospel, when Jesus had been arrested, Pilate came out and said, like it's customary that we release one of your people before the Sabbath. So y'all could either have Jesus of Nazareth or we can release the criminal or the murderer Barabbas. And they said, give us Barabbas. And so they released Barabbas and crucified Jesus. The thing about that is Barabbas is Bar Abba. Bar Abba, which Bar in Hebrew is son. Abba is the father. So technically his name is son of the father. So you had Jesus, the son of God, and you had Barabbas, the son of the father. It's kind of play on both. You was picking one over the other. Kind of the story of the scapegoat, where they would take one goat and sacrifice it and let the other goat go. It's called One was called a scapegoat. It was the same thing they did. Just, they, they're just stealing from other stories in the book. So Barabbas became the scapegoat and they crucified Jesus. All right? But in the movie, Barabbas was a warrior who was basically immortal. And all you could kill him was if you hit him in the heel. For those of you that this doesn't sound familiar to, in Greek and Roman mythology, or especially in Greek mythology, you have Achilles. And he was basically invincible except for his heel. Because I told y'all this before, his mother had dipped him in the river Styx when he was a baby. She basically held him by his foot and dipped him in the river Styx to protect him. So the only part of him that didn't get dipped was the part she was holding with her hand, only place he was vulnerable. So basically, they have, they have taken Barabbas out of the original character, what he was in the Gospels, and made him into a gladiator and into Achilles in the movie. It's just like, you know, they're kind of playing off a whole lot of stuff here. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. So now Barabbas became partners with Clarence on his mission to be the Messiah. And, you know, pulling this fake trick, you're going to be blind, you're going to be crippled, and they're going around just doing fake miracles, collecting Hella money. I mean, he's just collecting money. His, his gear done changed. He got a girl he was chasing, all of that. But as, as time went on, he started feeling guilty about what he was doing. And, you know, he went back and kind of made some changes to things. And, and people saw him differently for what he was doing. Now, Jesus is floating around. But they don't really emphasize Jesus too much. The story's not really about him. The movie's not really about him. It's almost like... Uh, Ben-Hur with Charleston Heston. Jesus was around, but the movie wasn't about Jesus. It was about somebody else living their life, and Jesus was kind of floating here and there through the story, but he wasn't part of the story. Same thing with the book of Clarence. Jesus was around, but him and Clarence wasn't based. They weren't bumping heads and nothing like that. They were just, he hear about him, hear the story, then it just didn't make sense. So Clarence didn't believe him, which nobody would. But what I liked the most was when Clarence went out preaching, he preached knowledge over belief. That was his preaching. Knowledge over belief. Y'all, there's no need in believing. You need to have knowledge. Knowledge is where the power is. Not in just believing something you don't know. To that point, everything Clarence was saying, I agreed. I agreed with him. Knowledge over belief. Belief just means you don't know. Now, to the believers who watch this movie, their whole thing, they're so based in belief and faith, they can't really understand what the brother is saying because they don't want to have the knowledge and not have belief. They're going to stick with belief and faith. But no, once you got the knowledge and you know, you don't need to believe anymore. So certain things happened to Clarence in his life, and I guess God worked out something for him. And the friend says, so now do you believe? And he says, no, I don't believe. I know. That's what I like. He didn't. As a non-believer, you can't just get me to believe something because you believe it. 
That, that, that means nothing to me. When he says, no, I don't believe, I know. And through the whole midst of the movie, even to the very end, not once did this man have faith. Not once did he believe. Not once. He stuck to his guns and he stuck on knowing. If, if, I, if I can't know it, I don't want it. So the, so the believers would be like, see, God showed himself and now he became a believer. He never became a believer. He was a knower. He knew based off of what happened to him. So watch, watch the believers come out there and tell you that he, he believes in Jesus. No, he knew at that point. But yet again, the story is not focused on Jesus. It's focused on the life of Clarence. Therefore, the name the book of Clarence. So, so the believers, I mean, the, the Christian is going to, oh, blasphemy and, oh, he's doing this, and blaspheming God, disrespecting Jesus and all of that. No, he didn't. That's not what the movie is about. And, and two, Clarence, and this is a spoiler alert, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it. Don't listen to this part. Spoiler, don't listen if you haven't seen it. Clarence gets crucified in the end. He gets crucified. And all, all of the people are behind him. Oh, don't crucify Clarence. He's a good man. And even people that didn't like him, they crying all out. Some of them want to, like in the gospel, they want to draw their sword and help him. And Clarence is carrying the cross. He's telling them, no, no, Barabbas want to help. No, don't help me. People want to help. No, don't help me. Don't help me. And what they ended up doing is, if you watched the movie, you've seen it, you know this part. They hung a white man on the cross, on the first cross, who looked just like the white version of Jesus. Looked just like the white version. And Clarence was behind him. There was like about 10 people being crucified out there because crucifixion was a common uh, death sentence in Rome. So it, was, it wasn't, you know, like Jesus was the only one crucified, even though his story is fake. But the whole story, of this, of this, the whole point of this, what he was doing was, Clarence was off to the side. The people weren't crying over the white, the white man that looked like Jesus. They were crying with the, with the man with the locks in his head next to him. That, that's who Rome focused on. He was getting all of this attention from the people. All these people were out there to see Clarence. They loved him. His mother was out there. The girl he loved was out there. His best friends was out there. Even to the point where the, the, uh, the centurion was like, Use this like stab him, he'll be dead within an hour. It was basically the spear of destiny. If you know anything about Indiana Jones, they chased the spear of destiny. Like they had certain certain things that they chased. I'm not gonna get into that. But he took the spear, like they did Jesus, and he poked him in the side, and he died soon after. Now the point of all of this is when people talk about, yeah, they say Jesus was historic. Okay, just like Clarence was historic. Let's just say for the sake of the movie. Clarence was historic. Now, these people greatly loved Clarence. They really did. But did Clarence really do any miracles? No. But when they write stories about him, when they say he did these miracles? Yes. Yes, the Gospels are based off the love of a man like Clarence, who didn't like the system, or, you know, like Barabbas didn't, didn't like the system, and Rome can't have you messing up the thoughts of the people, so they would crucify him. They'd get him out the way. So the Gospels are not based on somebody doing the stuff they did. The Gospels are based off a story. Basically, the Gospels are based off of stories way before that. And they just need to put somebody in there to make the story. None of that stuff is real. So it's not disrespectful to any gods because none of them can be proven. There ain't no messiahs, none of that stuff. So there's no disrespect to no Jesus, no disrespect to God. No disrespect to Zeus, no disrespect to none of it. Just, there's no disrespect. It's a movie. And if you know anything about how the New Testament was put together, that's what I'm telling you. It was all based off of somebody writing a story because they greatly adored somebody that died that loved the people. That's what it was. Now, I'm going to keep this short and sweet. I know some believers are going to be like, oh, you don't understand. You don't understand the scriptures and all of that. It's just... Is black and white, words on a page, and you can't take the Bible at face value because the story you read is not the story it's telling. It's not, it's not literal. Nothing about the Bible is literal. It's all basically a story, and if anything's in it, 
is figurative and it's, and it's talking about constellations. It's not talking about no real people because you don't did none of that matters. What, what does that change in your life today? Nothing. You just believe it and waste time giving money to it, waste time going to a church for it, waste time battling people about it when you can't prove none of it and you're no different than anybody else. So it's just another mythical story. The Book of Clarence is a mythical story, but it showed you a whole lot if you are not believing the Bible and trying to line it all up and say this don't make sense. It's, that's not how the movie goes. It's for entertainment. Well, also has a purpose for they connect things from, from today to back then. You have to watch the movie to see it. But please don't listen to people who are judging the movie that watched a, a two-minute trailer four months ago. Don't listen to them at all. At all. And so I'm giving you the perspective here from a non-believer and what's really going on in the movie. And with that being said, I'm going to be out of here until I see y'all in the next video. Peace.